Accounting class. In this today's class, we'll be discussing the basics of photography. It is our first class. Of course, we'll be discussing the various uh, foundational issues you need to know about photography, foundational concepts so, uh, from this class before we can move to other advanced concepts. And of course, uh, I am Akuji Philip, your teacher of Elfield Studio. I'm actually uh, Elfield Studio is a studio based in Abuja. And of course, with time, we're going to have several branches across the world. So feel free to visit any of our branches whenever you are uh, opportunity to be around. Thank you so much. So let's dive right into class. Today, our first topic right here is introduction to photography. Photography is the art and science of capturing light. Now, photography is both a science and an art. Why? Because... Um, the photographer, his ultimate goal is to capture an image that would be represented artistically, that would help capture the beauty of nature, or represent a particular a particular product, or a particular subject, you know, in a very artistic way. And so he tries to ensure that the end product, which is a photograph, is something that is artistic and memorable to um, whoever needs it. However, before the photographer captures an image, he engages in the various scientific processes of observation, analysis, and experiment, okay? And even after capturing the image, he also goes further to process this image with several technological uh, apparatus. Of course, capturing the image is with the technological apparatus, which is our camera, and then he goes further to post process this image with a computer system and several other things and also all these processes at every point in time he uses his mind to you know observe to analyze to experiment so that is why photography is both art and a science and it is the art and science of capturing light light is the most important is one of the most important parts of photography so without light you won't be able to capture anything simply I define light as that which makes manifest why do we say light is that which make make manifest simply because what you see right now is just a reflection is a reflection of light if there is no light everything is going to be black it's going to be dark it's going to be uh, you know endless empty you're not going to see anything so and what you see is also dependent on the color of the light that is reflecting what you see so um a black mouse for example can appear red under a red light so what do we say what do we mean here we mean light is that which makes you see what you see and as a photographer your duty is to capture this light artistically through or using scientific methodologies all right, so let's move forward. There are different types of photography. Uh, there, there is portrait photography, which involves capturing people. There is landscape photography, which involves capturing uh, beautiful, you know, sceneries. It could be desert landscape. It could be um, forest landscape. Uh, it could be whatever kind of landscape. It just involves capturing landscape. There is the artistic photography, which involves uh, capturing either uh, you know, people or scenarios and representing them artistically. And there is a fashion photography which is more centered or focused uh, towards capturing fashion, fashion uh, dresses. It could be male wears, female wears, and all of that. And there is uh, nude photography which is, of course, much more uh, linked towards capturing people's nudity. And there are several other types of photography. I will encourage you to go online and, of course, study several other types of photography. And, of course, try to find out which niche, of course, which aspect of photography would you be very interested in. Of course, all these um, uh, types of photography are very lucrative. And there are lots of photographers that are doing very well in all these areas. So you can choose one particular niche, one particular type of photography to specialize in. The camera is the most important tool of the photographer. And why do we say it's the most important tool? It is that tool with which you capture light. It is the tool with which you capture images. And so it is very, very important.
important and we're going to talk about the different types of cameras now uh quickly before we dive in i want you to know that there are different categories of cameras people who have categorized types of cameras based on different factors and criteria. people have categorized cameras types of cameras based on brands you can categorize them based on sensor sizes you can categorize them based on their history and all of that but i've chosen an approach in this very class to focus on two major categories and that's the analog cameras and the digital cameras the analog cameras are the old-fashioned cameras that use films and manual focus system most of them use manual focus system however uh, over time um, the analog cameras also evolved to the optofocus system before the evolution of the digital cameras the digital cameras are basically the modern type of cameras that helps us in capture image capturing images and they record these images in digital sensors and uh, this sensor transfers or processes these images and ensures that they are now saved in digital memories which could be memory card or any kind of memory now the two major the major difference between these two type of camera is that the analog camera uses the analog sensor which is the film if you are used to the old uh, camera system you would have seen the camera film uh, it's called the negative when it is processed but when it is um, unprocessed it is called the film so when it is processed the negative and you need to put it under a light ray to in order to see the the image images are exposed within it okay that's the major difference whereas the digital camera uses the digital, digital sensor and uh, this digital sensor is right within the camera for the negative you need to ensure that you get different films and load them of course most of those films uh, those days are usually 36 exposures with extra but for the digital camera it is a digital sensor and this digital sensor doesn't um, um, get exhausted okay you use it as much as long as you can of course depending on the lifespan of the camera now with digital advancement digital photographs are instantly processed and can immediately be viewed and transferred in the analog days you can view them immediately you can only snap and then after processing your film to a negative in a dark room that is when you can uh, see what you have snapped and if you made mistakes you would now go back and correct them which is really days after you're snapping the photograph but in the digital uh, photography you see what you've snapped immediately and you can go ahead to make corrections immediately Digital cameras are uh, examples. They are the cameras in your phones. There are other brands like Nikon cameras, Canon cameras, Pentax cameras, and several other type of cameras. Okay. Now, uh, types of digital cameras. We have uh, I've categorized them basically into two. We have the DSLR cameras, which is the digital single lens reflex cameras, and the mirrorless cameras. Now we're going to discuss the DSLR cameras. These are cameras that reflect images into the viewfinder with the aid of mirrors in the camera body. Now these cameras have a mirror that is right inside behind the lens. Now the light that comes through the lens is reflected on the mirror and the, it goes to the viewfinder for you, uh, the photographer, to see the image that is being formed. There are categories of DSLR. Of course, one other thing again is that when um, a, sh the, a shot is taken with a DSLR, the mirror closes up so the sensor can capture the image that is coming through the lens. Okay, that is the unique thing about a DSLR camera. There are two major types uh, or categories of DSLR cameras, and these are basically the full-frame cameras and the crop frame cameras the full-frame cameras these are cameras whose sensor sizes are equal to the old analog film and usually the old analog film is 24 millimeter by 36 millimeter and it is generally pronounced as 24 uh, 24 by 36 mm that is what uh, it's generally pronounced as and the, the full-frame cameras are usually most expensive they are the most expensive type of cameras and examples include the D800, Nikon, the Nikon D850, Nikon D750, Canon 5D Mark II, 6D Mark II, and 
lot more. The crop frame cameras, on the other hand, are cameras that were introduced in a bid to reduce the cost of digital cameras. The two most common uh, crop sensor sizes are the APS-C and the Micro Four Thirds, which have 1.6x and 1.5x crop factor, respectively. Now, uh, there are different categories uh, of crop frame sizes. Okay, this depends on the brand, on the company, and the producers of the camera. But one unique thing about the crop frame cameras is that they are smaller, they are cheaper. Okay, they are cost effective. And in crop frame cameras, the edge of your photo is usually cropped for a tighter field of view. So this um, uh, then means that when you take photographs with a crop frame camera, um, the uh, with the, the same at uh, the same focal length, the image is going to be closer in a crop frame camera than it will be in a full frame camera. The second type of camera we have here is the mirrorless cameras. The mirrorless cameras capture images without the use of a mirror to reflect images into the viewfinder from the lens okay they don't have that mirror that flips open or closes when shots are taken it's the phone camera is a good example of a mirrorless camera as opposed to the dslr what you see in the lcd is usually what you get examples of mirrorless cameras include the eos m50 the sony a7 mark III, the Fujifilm X-T3 and the Sony 7R Mark IV and the Nikon Z6 and lots more. Now the mirrorless cameras are actually what we have trending today and it's usually it's more like the future of cameras. So I would encourage you to take your time, go study, learn more about the mirrorless because they are faster, they are lighter and photography is moving towards mirrorless and who knows very soon probably mirrorless cameras are going to totally replace uh, the DSLR cameras just like the DSLR cameras replaced the analog cameras so just watch out for that mirrorless cameras have the advantage of being lighter they are more compact they are faster and they shoot better videos all cameras have one major part okay and that is called the mode dial when you understand the mode dial you will be able to manage and control your camera the mode dial is a dial that is used in digital cameras to change the camera mode the different camera modes the different camera settings so you can either manipulate the different settings on your own or you allow the camera to manipulate the settings for you or you do some part of the manipulation of the settings while the camera does some other part for you most digital cameras use the mode dial to control the various camera settings and we shall examine uh, the mode dial of Nikon D3200 in this very class. Now the Nikon D3200 mode dial, uh, the camera offers a choice of the following shooting modes. Let's look at them. We have um, the guide, the auto, uh, let's look at them briefly. Um, we have the manual mode, the manual mode which is the M, we have the aperture, uh, priority mode which is the A, we have the shorter priority mode which is the S, we have the program auto which is the P. Now most professional camera photographers use these very modes quite often. Okay, we have other modes uh, which are the scene modes. The scene modes, uh, for example, this very scene, the camera automatically optimizes settings to suit scene selected with these very modes. Now for this very mode, um, we, you, you enjoy this very mode when you're shooting within a zoom or in any area where it is not permitted to use flash you use the, enjoy this mode when you want to shoot um, uh, close-up pictures you enjoy this when you're shooting landscape uh, this is for portraits this is for landscape this is for baby shoot this is for a, a, a fast moving object a fast moving person this is for close-ups and of course um, this uh, I can't remember this for now and this is the auto mode for this very auto mode, the camera controls everything for you, okay, it adjusts everything, while the guide is for newbies that do not have understanding of what the camera uh, uh, can do, so the camera will guide you through this to choose your, your desire and your desired uh, interest, and the camera sets the rest for you. Okay, so let's go forward. 
the auto mode. The auto mode is suitable for point and shoot camera settings. Uh, it's for point and shoot uh, photography where the camera settings are adjusted automatically according to the type of scene. The program auto, in this program auto, uh, the camera adjusts the speed and aperture automatically while you um, uh, just do the shooting and maybe you manipulate your ISO and your, your temperature, you know, and all of that, key values. There's a shutter priority mode, a priority auto, which is a uh, S. The photographer selects the shutter speed while the camera controls the aperture. This is suitable when the subject is subject's motion is the most important factor. And so, if you really want to, uh, of course, control the speed of or the motion of your subject, shutter priority mode is the option. You can use this to achieve beautiful freeze or blur motion effects when the camera is moved or held still while shooting a moving object. The auto mode. Uh, we or we have the aperture priority mode. Okay, this is not uh, under the auto mode. This is the aperture priority mode, and the prior aperture priority mode is 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 just more like the opposite of the shutter priority mode. Here, this is suitable when the blur of the foreground foreground background is the major factor. The user sets the aperture while the camera controls the speed. The lower the aperture, the greater the blur. Uh, of the background and of course the foreground and as well as the bokeh effect the manual mode the user has total control of both the shutter speed and the aperture this is suitable when you want to have total control of the end result of the images produced this is mostly used by professionals as they have to they have free as they are free to tweak the camera settings to suit their desired goals and themes now uh, we are limiting our discussion of the mode dial to these very four different modes because as a professional photographer, you're supposed to decide what you get in your shoot. You don't allow the camera to totally control everything for you. You want to control certain things so you can control the end result. And that is what makes it fun for you as a professional photographer. The next thing we want to discuss is camera lenses and there are two major types of camera lenses which are the zoom lenses and the prime lens the zoom lens offers different focal lengths for the photographer to select from this means the photographer can choose to remain at a single spot and draw the images closer or push them further away you can draw your subject closer or push him further away so uh, there are different examples of the zoom lenses. We have the 18 to 55 mm lens, the 18 to 105 mm lens, the 24 to 70 mm lens, the 55 to 200 mm lens, and lots more. The leverage or the super advantage of the zoom lens is that you can actually adjust and shoot at different focal lengths. The prime lens, on the other hand, offers a single focal length for the photographer. This means the photographer will have to move closer or further away to get his or her desired frame or composition. The prime lens are often low light lenses and some can be adjusted to an aperture of even 1.2 f-stops. This allows for more blur foreground and background as the case may be. And um, most prime lenses offer very beautiful bouquet effects. Examples are the 50mm prime lens, the 85mm, 24mm lenses, and lots more other popular type of lenses can easily be categorized under uh, uh, zoom lenses or prime lenses and these examples might be telephoto lenses fish eye lenses wide angle lenses and lots more okay when it comes to lenses there are different categories also but uh, we are sticking to the zoom lens and the prime lens in this very class this is one good example of a prime lens okay this value the price might not really be the current price Okay, but then the 24mm lens is very good for um, low light shots and the f-stop can go as low as 1.4 um, and it's a Nikon lens. So we're going to look at the 14 to 24 mm zoom lens, which is an ultra wide angle lens and uh, is another super powerful lens. Uh, we have the 70 to 300 mm lens. This is a Nikon lens also and um, it's 
the f-stop can go as low as 4.5 some can even go as low as 3.7 but this can go as low as 4.5 and of course you can go and check the current prices and all of that so we're going to round up this class here and um, i have an assignment for every one of you number one research and list 10 different types or uh, types or themes of photography number two is list five examples of analog cameras with their images we want to see their pictures number three list five advantages and disadvantages of crop frame and full frame cameras and uh, number four what are the different what are the differences the pros and the cons of the prime of prime lenses and zoom lenses and last of all we want you to list five other types of lenses aside the zoom and prime lenses okay so that will be all for today thank you so much for being part of our class See you in the next class. Do have a beautiful day and keep learning.